to try to convince you that the function e to the x is its own derivative. So if we first got to remember uh, the definition, right? What is this mysterious number e? Right? E is the unique real number so that the following statement is true. The limit of e to the h minus 1 over h as h goes to 0 is equal to 1. Right. Now, we've already seen uh, you know, some heuristic argument as to why such a number should, should exist. Right. So e is the unique real number, so that the limit of e to the h minus 1 over h as h goes to 0 is, is 1. Right. All right, and now given this, I want to prove the following. Right. If I've got a function f of x is e to the x, right, then the derivative of f at x is also e to the x. Right. So how do, how do I see something like this? Oh, it's not going to be too hard, right? We just got to write down the definition of derivative. So the derivative of the function at the point x is the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. And I told you what f of x is. It's e to the x. So this is the limit as h goes to 0 of e to the x plus h minus e to the x over h. How do I calculate that, that limit? Well, I can use some of the properties of exponents, right? I know what e to the x plus h is. It's e to the x times e to the h. So this limit is equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of e to the uh, x times e to the h minus e to the x over h. Now I've got a common factor of e to the x in both the terms in the numerator. So I'm going to pull those out. And I get that this is the same as the limit as h goes to 0 of e to the x times e to the h minus 1 over h. I can do some more to this limit. Right? I've got the limit of e to the x times this fraction. Right? And e to the x doesn't involve h at all. So as far as h is concerned, Right? Wiggling h doesn't change e to the x at all. e to the x is really a constant in this limit calculation. So I can pull e to the x out of the limit. Right? The limit of a constant times something is the constant times the limit, provided the limit exists. So this is e to the x times the limit as h goes to 0 of e to the h minus 1 over h, provided this limit exists. But this limit does exist, right? This limit exists because e is the unique real number so that this limit exists and is equal to 1. So this is really e to the x times 1, which is really e to the x. And that proves that the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, right? I wanted to calculate the derivative of e to the x, so I set up this function f of x, right? And then to calculate the derivative of that function, I just use the definition of derivative. It's the limit as h goes to 0 of the function at x plus h minus f of x over h. And then I can plug in what this function is. This is a function e to the x. So this is e to the x plus h minus e to the x over h. And then I can calculate that limit by using the rules for exponentiation to replace e to the x plus h by e to the x times e to the h. And once I've done that, I can pull out an e to the x. Now I've got a constant times something. And I can pull that constant out because this other limit exists. Right? This is the limit that we use to define the function. The, uh, number e, right? This limit e equals 1. Uh, so that's, a, that's an argument as to why the derivative of e to the x is, it, is itself. It's e to the x.